All right. Welcome to episode three of Cord Cutters. This week, unfortunately, we can't be joined by Ned. Um, if he pops on later, that works. If not, that's cool. Um, this week, we're going to be talking, sadly, not video notes, because I don't have anything prepared for that. I was going to let Ned deal with it. Maybe that. Maybe we can push that to next week. Instead, this week, we're going to talk about hardware, um, software, and everything in between. Um, also, I'd be happy to take anybody's questions if you've got them as if you start watching the next little while. Uh, let's see. Let me go ahead and open up the link to YouTube. Oh, or not. Okay. Well, I'll skip. I'll skip your questions until until a little bit later. Oh, well, the reason there are no questions is because I haven't actually posted the link yet. Yeah. All right. Now it's all posted. Um. Apologies to everybody who uh, who just listened to a whole bunch of nothingness. I don't think I don't think any of you will have, but you know whatever. Um, so to get started, to get started, I wanted to to begin by uh, going ahead and showing off a couple of things that I think, as far as hardware recommendations go, will probably be. I don't know. I think we'll probably try to make this a, a regular monthly thing. Uh, you know, if it goes well, if people like it, uh, we'll, we'll do it some more. If not, then uh, maybe this would be a one-time event. Um, but the idea behind hardware recommendations with Cody is that, you know, there are so many different possible things that Cody can do that making any one hardware recommendation is just virtually impossible. Uh, just because so many people have so many different requirements for Cody. Um, so with that in mind, I have kind of a couple different categories that I think that I think kind of fit with the, with with what you might be trying to do with Cody. Um, and so I'm gonna kind of give at least what I use personally uh, recommendations, and then uh, and then uh, you know if you in the comments have any alternative ideas, maybe we can talk about those next week. Um, but so in my mind, there are somewhere roughly three major categories that you need to deal with there's the server category uh or the video gaming category or basically any category where you want a full uh home theater pc or gaming pc uh to do cody with um that's that's number one and that's easily the most expensive one we'll get to that in a minute uh number two is streaming cody which by which i mean cody where you probably live in America, and not only do you want Cody, but you probably also want Netflix, uh, Hulu, and whatever else. Um, and finally, there's the uh, there's the category of wanting some kind of little inexpensive server that just you probably have a NAS somewhere or some computer that's serving everything up. So you really just want Cody all by itself. Um, so to get into those categories, let's start with the American, uh, the American streaming category. And for that, my suggestion is to go with the Fire TV Stick. I'm gonna pull it out of the box here. It's um, ridiculously tiny. The remote control for it is actually slightly bigger than the stick itself. You can see that. Um, yeah. Slightly bigger than the stick itself here. Oh, is that? There we go. Uh, Amazon.com right there. Here's the controller. Um, the reason I personally recommend this one is because I use it. So, I mean, that's uh, I'm most familiar with it. There may be others that are actually better. Uh, for example, I'm pretty sure there are a few things out there right now that are small like this using the AM Logic S805 chipset, which means it can do 4K TV. But um, you know, I don't have that, so I can't really recommend it. Uh, if anybody out there wants to send me it so I can take a look at it, absolutely feel free to. But for now, 
this seems to be the way to go. Uh, it accomplishes basically everything you want. It uh, lets you watch everything off of Amazon Prime, everything off of Netflix, etc. And of course, it runs Kodi. Uh, to make it run, Cody, though, you actually have to do a couple interesting things. Let me go ahead and share. Let's see. Okay. Let me go ahead and share this screen here. This is the screen for the Amazon Fire TV. Uh, and actually... The Amazon Fire TV and the Amazon Fire TV Stick are pretty similar. Um, if you want a little bit more power, the Amazon Fire TV is the way is the way to go. But the Stick and the TV work essentially the same way, um, and they accomplish basically the same tasks. So, at least in my opinion, there's not really any reason to go with the Amazon Fire TV. Uh, if if uh, if all you're looking for is just a, a simple little streaming device, uh, here's the the stick. Um, so to install at the moment, uh, Cody is not in the Amazon store, or it is, but it's not available for the stick. Uh, so you're going to have to go through the process of installing, uh, which means clicking on this. And my suggestion is simply to go ahead and install. Uh, ADB Fire. It's really it's a really easy install and it, it does a, a really simple job of it, uh, doing everything you need to do uh, to get Kodi up and running. Um, once you've got Kodi up and running, it, it works essentially just like any other app on the uh, on the Amazon Fire TV or Amazon Fire TV Stick. Uh, all it is, it gets listed up at the top. Uh, you should follow. Here, let me go there. You should follow the, the the suggestion on here to, let's see if it's in here. Yeah, there's an entire section in the how-to on accessing Kodi from Fire TV. Um, essentially, you use this little app called Llama to change uh, another app that you have installed so it automatically launches Kodi, and it also replaces the default uh, the default logo from whatever that app's logo was originally to Cody's logo. Um, uh, it seems unlikely that anyone out there would be using would be using this the particular apps they suggest. Uh, and there are two apps, so if you really are using one of the two, you can always use the other one for Cody. Uh, once you have that installed, though, uh, once you launch Cody, everything works pretty much the way you would expect. Um, Let's see. Can, there we go. Uh, everything works pretty much the way you would expect. Um, and so, you know, Cody works pretty much the way Cody always works. Uh, so that's my suggestion for a streaming, a little streaming device that actually runs Netflix. Uh, if you wanted to go with a device that's also lightweight um, and small, but accomplishes pretty much everything else, you, uh, but doesn't include streaming, but does accomplish almost everything else you need for Kodi to accomplish, then my suggestions, at least in the moment, are to go with either a, a, uh, a Raspberry Pi 2, um, and we showed that off last week, so definitely check that out, or to go with something like the, uh, the uh, Intel Nook, which um, in both cases, there it's it's very possible to get uh, to get C HDMI CEC working. So if you've got it all set up with HDMI CEC, then you don't need basically anything else. You, you power it with a little control with a little uh, micro USB cord, attach it to the HDMI, and then it can do everything. Uh, you can of course also use uh, a FLIRT con uh, controller or something like that if you don't want to go HDMI. But Raspberry Pi 2, frankly, right now is probably the, probably one of the easiest solutions, especially if you're able to set it up yourself. Just because it can do 1080p, um, if you have a 3D TV, it can automatically set this 3D TV to 3D mode if you're watching 3D videos. Uh, it can do almost everything you need, uh, just your standard device to do, a standard lightweight Kodi device to do if you don't want any other kind of Netflix streaming activities. If you just want Kodi, it's a pretty simple setup. 
Um, uh, and then finally, this is sort of near and dear to my heart because it's once again what I've got going on. Uh, if you're into gaming, then you really do want probably a little bit of a stronger computer to get, to get that all set up. Um, and so rather than suggesting, you know, whatever the latest and greatest is, I thought I'd actually kind of walk you through my personal build of, of uh, my gaming PC just so you can see, uh, let's see, just so you can see what I've got going on. So uh, we started out with the Fractal Design Node 304. Uh, I actually had the black case because the white case didn't exist at the time, but I really like I really like the white case. So I, if you're going to go this way, I mean, you can do it either way, but I like the white case a lot. Um, it's uh, a mini ITX case, uh, and I just don't personally see the reason to get a bigger case anymore these days unless you're planning on doing something uh, a little bit more extravagant. Um, if you're planning on using two video cards, for example, or overclocking, you might want to go something bigger than a mini ITX case. Uh, but for your standard average user who doesn't want to spend more than you know $1,000 on a gaming PC, this is probably the way to go. Uh, as you can see, it has a, a vent port on the left side for uh, your gaming card. It has a lot of different vents all over the place just to make sure that the air is good enough uh, to, to pass through. Um, it's also got... If, if you can see here, it's got these three slots on the top. These three slots hold two, uh, two uh, hard drives or uh, SSDs each, which means that you can have just some ungodly amount of hard drive space for storing movies and DVDs and whatever. Um, so I really like the case for that. There are other small IT, uh, mini ITX cases out there. I just really like this one just because it kind of it kind of performs double duty. It gives you a graphics card if you want one, and it gives you the uh, uh, sorry, it gives you the opportunity to put a full size graphics card in if you want one, uh, and it also gives the op you the opportunity to store just massive amounts of data, which for Kodi users is pretty nice. Next. Honestly, from this point on, a lot of the stuff I'm going to suggest comes straight from TonyMac.com, um, which is, is it's just a site that shows you how to put together a PC that can also run OS X if you want it to, uh, you know, the Mac operating system. Um, for uh, every once in a while, I kind of switch over to that uh, on my own personal PC just because the Mac operating system for me is useful for video editing and things like that. Uh, you don't necessarily need to go this way. There are a lot of other options, but I, you know, these seem like pretty decent options to me, so I, I, I mostly suggest sticking with them. So next we have this graphics, uh, this motherboard, uh, and I'll post the links for all of these uh, in the, down below once we, once we finish wrapping this up. But this is the Gigabyte uh, H97 Wi-Fi uh, motherboard. The reason I like it uh, is because aside from it's having that full uh, SATA, uh, oh, excuse me, that, that full spot for a graphics card, there are also uh, six SATA slots, uh, which means that you can put uh, one SSD and then five, if you want, uh, just massive hard drives on there, um, all in, in just a tiny little space, and, and get a, an unheard of number of terabytes of data storage. Um, next, uh, RAM, you know, whatever. RAM's RAM. It's pretty boring. Um, at, the, at this point in time, I suggest go ahead. Uh, you should go ahead and buy an SSD. Um, this is, we're talking about building a, a uh, gaming PC here, and those things really do benefit from, from solid-state drives. Uh, if you're going with a smaller device, an SSD really isn't necessary. Like, if you went with a Nook, you could really probably just deal with a, a, your standard mini hard drive or even a thumb drive these days. But um, for a gaming PC, an SSD is absolutely the way to go. Um, you can even get, this is, it's crazy what you can get these days compared to only a year ago. You can get the Samsung 850 Evo 500 gig SSD with read and write rates around 550 megabytes per second uh, for less than $200, which is really incredible these days. Um, next, for graphics cards, I, I really like this one. 
Uh, it's not actually the one I have. I have the NVIDIA 760, but uh, you know, there's no reason to go with that sort of older card when this one exists for about the same price. Uh, it's $206. It does a lot of the things that people are going to want in the near future. Uh, I believe, uh, and don't quote me on this one, but I believe this card is might actually be, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's qualified for 4K TV, so it's future proof in that regard. I believe it's got an HDMI 2 port, and if it doesn't, then the uh, PCI, excuse me, then the uh, let's see here. The display port will will handily handle the 4K uh, for you, uh, and it's um, an all around pretty pretty amazing card. Um, the other reason I like it is because I'm a big fan of the NVIDIA Game Stream concept. Uh, it, so if you happen to have a, an NVIDIA Shield or other kind of tablet that can play Game Stream content, uh, and virtually everything can these days thanks to Limelight. Um, and uh, you should just Google Limelight, or I could provide a link. Um, Limelight's this really crazy software that lets anything act as a receiver for game stream, which means that your gaming PC can do all of the hard graphic, uh, hard hard work on de decoding graphics for video games, and then any other device can play them. Um, Limelight lets any uh, lets any device do that, and uh, that. All is possible, and we're actually attempting to make that part of uh, part of part of Cody itself, thanks to a, a Google uh, Google Summer of Code uh, entry. Um, but that's all possible because of this graphics card, uh, and graphics cards like it. So my suggestion is to stick with NVIDIA graphics cards that are fairly recent. If you're going down this road, uh, you don't have to, and if you're not interested in game stream, then you certainly don't need to. I just personally like the idea. Next, Intel Core i5. Pretty much any modern Intel Core i5 processor is going to be fine. There's no real reason to go crazy on this. There may in the future be a time when we need to really go, go nuts making our CPUs better again. But for the moment, it's just not especially necessary. Uh, and then finally, desktop hard drives these days uh, are absurdly large for not very much. The, the problem a few years ago where there just wasn't enough supply to meet demand is, is pretty well gone. But these days, you can get three terabytes for $90 and four ter terabyte high drives for $120. And that's that means you're looking at basically one terabyte per $30, which is a pretty great deal. Uh, I wouldn't, at this point in time, go below three terabytes, actually, because the, the price difference starts getting worse for you. Three terabytes at 90, two terabytes should be $60, and it's not. Um, and below that, it actually starts costing more again. So if you're going to go this way, I'd suggest getting three terabytes and higher. Um, then you just need to slot five of these in, or, you know, one, because it's three terabytes. Uh, and you'll have a pretty fantastic gaming PC that can also act as a server for all of your content and do almost everything else you need it to do. Uh, all right, so let's get out of that. So those are my recommendations at least this month uh, for for uh, for your devices. Uh, uh, finally, and this is I talked about it, so I figured I may as well bring it up. Uh, finally, the Nvidia Shield tablet is pretty great. Uh, I use it a lot. It's got an HDMI mini port. Um, and you can hook that up to pretty much any TV on at home or on the road. And if you have a uh, game stream turned on, then one of the really cool things you can do is you can actually include Cody in the thing streamed, hook this up to, you know, whatever TV your hotel is at or whatever, um, and actually stream your home Cody onto this tablet. Uh, so for now, I highly recommend if you're going to get a tablet, the NVIDIA Shield is a pretty good one to go with. Um, the battery life isn't as good as some other ones, uh, but beyond that, I really like it a lot. Uh, once once the NVIDIA Shield console comes out, the, the reason to have this tablet kind of goes away, um, but for now, it's pretty nice. Uh, so those are the hardware recommendations I've got for you guys. Um, other things I wanted to talk about this week. 
Let me see, I have a list. Uh, we've already talked about Google Summer of Code a little bit. Uh, I guess I can go over that just one more time. And now that I've got it open, let's see if I have any questions for you. Um, no, oh, nope, there doesn't look like there are any questions at the moment, so I can't answer any of them. Um, maybe next week, or maybe once again, you guys can have your questions uh, between weeks and we can answer them as they come up. Um, so, let's see. So, going over Google Summer of Code, I think we talked about all this, but just to repeat, we have one one submission that lets people essentially replace their hardware AV receiver, one submission that makes green stream a possibility, better profile handling, and on-the-fly transcoding, which we consider one of the most exciting things coming up. Um, and I think since Ned isn't here to talk about uh, uh, video nodes, and I feel like one person alone talking about how great Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is this year uh, would just be painfully boring. Uh, I think that's going to do it for us this week. So um, tune in next week when we really will maybe potentially talk about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, video nodes, and we'll try to answer more of your questions. So uh, with that said, have a good week.